All right, so in today's tutorial, we want to look at how to basically forecast simulator stock prices using GBM in R. Before we proceed, I urge you to kindly go watch my previous tutorials on GBM simulation because I'm going to use most of the circles in here. So if you haven't watched those videos or you haven't subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe. There's a playlist on my channel called GBM Simulation. Kindly of go watch all those videos before you jump into this, right? So let's get started. <coughs> Alright, so first of all, we have to, before we can make any prediction with the simulated returns, we have to get a pseudo code for that. And this is the pseudo code that is going to help us to get a GBM um, simulated stock prices or returns. So I'm going to highlight this right and run this all right so once we have this we want to set a C just to reproduce the same random generation let's run this then I want to basically um, assign the simulated returns to SSP so we just need 500 simulated returns drift parameter I want to set it to 0 0.05 and the volatility parameter to 15 percent and I want to basically have our initial value to be 10 right so let's run this all right once we are done with this we want to set the last 14 days for testing so uh, this is basically the code of line to help us get that i want to do this because in literature gbm is suitable for short-term investment so anytime i want to just make a short-term focus then the gbm is suitable so that's the reason why we want to set the last 14 days for testing why and also we want to do this because we, we will actually like to compare the predicted values with the actual simulated returns so that we can actually validate our model whether the model is performing or it's not performing well so that's the basically why we have to also set this so let's run this then the next step is to set the first 486 days for training right this is basically going to be used for the calibration so let's run this then we want to transform this code of lines to transform right the uh, training set into time series objects so let's run this then this line is to plot this simulated returns right so once we run this here we are so this is going to be how this is how the simulator stock price is, is behaving starting with um, initial value of 10 try to have some upward trend and also begin to have some downward trend right and also try to fluctuate around the initial stock price so this is basically how the simulator returns for the training set is behaving once we are done with this we want to set up the initial value and want to use the first value for the testing data as our initial value remember that uh, one of the assumption for gbm is that um, stock prices follow a markov process meaning that only the current stock price is relevant for predicting future prices so for us to make any prediction we just want to rely on the first testing data to um, see how the prediction will look like now once we are done with this we want to create a drift and division volatility equations so this we are assigning the first term that's the expression for the drift term to d and the expression for the volatility term to s so this is basically um, the drift and volatility um, coefficient right then the next step is to let me go back so okay the next thing is to estimate this parameter that we have right from our training set or data set so i want to get a pseudo code and this pseudo code we have already looked at this from our previous tutorial so this is a pseudo code for estimating the uh, let me space this this is a pseudo code for estimating the drift parameter let me highlight it so this right okay so let's run this once we are done with this let's see the results or the value for the estimate 
so here we go 0 0.07 right then we do the same for the volatility um, estimate so this is a serial code that we are going to use for est to estimate the volatility parameter so let's run this code offline all right so once okay so let's see the value for the estimate so here we go 0 0.1473 right once we have these values we want to assign them to some defined object so we want to assign the drift estimate to drift and the volatility estimate we want to we want to set it to or assign it to diffusion right so let's run these two lines all right so once we are done with this we now want to create a drift and diffusion equations for the uh, simulation this is what basically what we are going to use for the simulation right so this is uh, the code of line for the first one is a drift this is a continuation right and a continuation then the next is a volatility now is the continuation of it so let's run this too right okay so once we are done with this we want to get a number of simulations right then want to basically use this container to create a cumulative sum for simulating the um, for basically calculating the mean right so this um, is a container that's going to store our predicted values right there's a container that is going to store um, the predicted values then we also want to use this container right to basically get our uh, to store all the simulated values for calculating um, the standard deviation for confidence intervals right this code of line is used to store the simulated values for calculating the standard deviation for confidence intervals right so let's run this right I think we didn't run this we can run this yep run this okay so now I want to basically if you want to load this package but if um, you don't have this package then you have to install it right because I have it I just want to comment so I'm going to load this package to help me um, compute the one dimension stochastic differential equation simulation so this is basically the simulation of diffusion process package once we load this we, we, we are going to use it to do the simulation the simulation of one dimension stochastic differential equation in here we have 13 observations for the predicted values remember that first initial value is going to be used in here so the result is going to we are going to have 14 predicted values the first one is going to be used as the initial value right so that's basically how they this is basically the time the time um the number of simulation steps but the first simulation step is going to be the initial value right then this is basically giving us the time step for simulation that's um we are dealing with daily returns this is basically a drift estimate right then um the next diffusion is the um, volatility estimate then we have the method to be error then want to we have different methods but we just want to use this for now and then we want to get um, the path or the trajectories to one right just one dimension stochastic differential equation simulation so the remaining coding follows to help us get our predicted values so let's run this code of lines all right so let me run this oh s not not found oh it's not meaning we didn't run this we have to run this okay so now let's go back let's go back to the for loop okay let's rerun this 
all right okay so now let's get the mean value the mean value is basically going to help us to get the predicted values all right so let's see the results so here we go so this the predicted values all right all right so once we have this we want to get a standard deviation we are going to use this for calculating the confidence intervals right then the next thing is to compare the actual versus the predicted values so the actual values we are using the testing data set and the predicted values right so let's see how the comparison will look like so here we go so you can see that the difference is not all that much you can see that the predicted values follow closely the um the the actual values right the actual simulated returns the predicted values closely follows it right so how do we measure the accuracy of our model whether the model is performing well or not we want to use the mean absolute percentage error to get that so input we are writing a function for it and this is the actual value this is the predicted value we need to input the actual value and the predicted value so we have to divide this one divided by the length of the actual value that's a sample we have to multiply by the sum that the, um, the sum of the absolute value for the difference between the actual value and the predicted value divided by the um, actual value then we have to multiply this by 100 right so this is the code of line to help us get our results right so let's run this and let's see the map value all right so here we go so it's very um this is less than or approximately one percent right which means that the model the gbm model is actually accurate right because in literature if the map value is within 10 percent or even 20 percent it means that the model is accurate so meaning that gbm model is actually giving us the right prediction right so how do we get a confidence interval we want to create an upper and lower bounds confidence so this is the upper confidence bound the upper bound right and this is basically going to give us a lower bound then we want to put this in the data frame just to get um see how the interval will look like so let's run these lines all right so here we go all right so now last but not the least we want to see um a plot how the plot will look like we want to plot the actual simulated returns we want to see the testing returns get a predicted returns we want to see all in one graph so we want to use the gg plot if you don't have this package then you have to install using this right i have this so i'm going to comment and just load this package and then we want to run this and run this line right this is the continuation right and then run the next line that's a continuation and then run the next line right and that's a continuation so this is basically a training data set this is a testing data set and there's a predicted set right the predicted values then the next thing is to label the y as this I want to label the x axis I want to give a title right and this is basically going to help us get the um, trying to cr um, add the confidence bound in our graph this code of line so the last step is to get the plot see how the plot look like let's run it all right so here we go so Mm, very hard to see this right let's zoom this all right so this is basically how the um, series behaves with a uh, can see that the predicted returns looks to be linear right it doesn't basically follow it but uh, consider the original data set that's the testing data set 
is not actually in line with the predicted values this is the original series but the same um, we can see that per the map the series the predicted series follows closely the actual series so we are good to go right so this is basically how to forecast or predict simulated returns using gbm in r please if you find value in this video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't to get more updates thank you for watching